You got a pretty mouth, boy. Well, that escalated quickly. It did. What are we doing today here? Well, I guess we're talking about redneck guns. Top five redneck guns. All right, guys. So, <laughs> you know, we figure hunting season's kind of uh, upon us, and what better way to poke a little fun at, uh, you know, our fellow rednecks, because we are rednecks. See, we can talk about rednecks because we are rednecks. We're going to talk about top five redneck guns. If you show up to deer hunting camp or you show up somewhere, these are the guns you know you're going to see. You're going <laughs> to see some variant of the guns that we have before us here. So uh, we're going to have a little fun, and of course there's always a wild card. Uh, let's get right into it here. Which one's the wild card today? I forgot. Whichever one we say it is. All right, well, we're going to start with... <laughs> <laughs> a Remington 700 chamber and 300 Weatherby Magnum. Yep. Okay. So, <laughs> you're not a redneck unless you have a uh, gun capable of shooting a straight line all the way to like 800, 900 yards. Yeah. You know, because you just want to put that reticle, your little duplex, right on what you on want to hit. 3 to 9 by 40 Nikon. <laughs> <laughs> you want to put it on whatever and shoot it one time. Like, God dang, that thing's got some kick to it. Yep. But this is a, actually a buddy of ours. This is John's gun that he bought from Moss forever ago. And I mean, it's it's a good gun <laughs> for hunting like out in out in the the west in the mountains where you're taking like eight or nine hundred shot yard shots on like mountain goats or things like that. You're stalking an animal for three or four days or whatever the case is. And you got to make a long shot and make sure it's got a lot of carrying energy. That round will definitely do it. Yeah. But it comes at a price. I mean, it's like eighty dollars for a box of twenty yep. in a lot of cases. But Something like this is a little extreme. I, I, I've got people I know that always have these crazy calibers, like 300 short action ultra magnum and stuff for hunting deer with. I'm like, you guys are crazy. You know, to be I mean, fair, the Remington 700 has harvested a lot of game. Okay, guys, we're not saying the Remington 700 is a bad gun. Oh, no. But you know, all. like blued metal, wood stock, you know, insert your random, obs not obsolete, but your random FUD caliber or whatever. A little bit of I mean, rust on the barrel, you know. Yeah, you know, whatever. But, you know, Remington 700s are great. They're going to show up in deer camp. Mm. Yes, it's it's an awesome redneck gun. We love them. I've killed my share of deer with a Remington 700. <laughs> Definitely not saying it's not a good gun. Uh, but, you know, it does fall into the redneck gun category to some degree. Uh, we're going to go <laughs> further down the redneck hole. All right, so you're not a redneck unless you have a Remington model 4 or a model 742 or a model 7400 if you have a remington auto loading rifle you might be a redneck these things are good guns when they're see through clean. rings <laughs> see through rings <laughs> this is actually my dad's gun this, this one uh, made an appearance in the recent uh, brush gun part 2 video but yeah this has like little express style sights on the barrel and everything he's got the see through rings on here and this is a little bushnell like uh yes yeah, 3 to 9 is like the epitome of a deer hunting rifle scope, I guess, but... To be um, fair, that gun's awesome. This gun is nice. It's probably the only <laughs> auto-floating Remington in Georgia that works. I, I mean, I'm just saying, well, you it's know, just you have, to, you have to consider, though, every season, your dad takes WD-40 and sprays a whole can down the barrel, and that's probably what's keeping it going. My dad is crazy with the WD-40, <laughs> but um, I've, re I've repaired... I've repaired a ton of these guns up at Moss when we were working there on a regular basis, and Ray and the guys up there have repaired a ton of them. They have a an interrupted uh, thread pattern uh, to the bolt. That's how it locks in place, and it's a rotating bolt and everything, like a delayed action and all, and uh, it, it just gets gummed up from not being cleaned, and there's been countless numbers of these rifles that have just like laid up in a closet somewhere and rusted out and uh, basically gotten a lot of pitting in the chamber, and there's really not a whole lot of help for them. Um, but if they're taken care of, these guns are very, very high quality. Um, they come in a variety of different calibers. Uh, sure. I know a guy who's got one of these in 270 who found some 15 round mags for it. I oh, mean, look out now. Get into a herd of deer. <laughs> but uh, my dad's killed a number of deer with this thing, killed coyotes with it. And I'll tell you what, it's just funny because he grabs it and he just goes out. He's like, oh, there's a coyote. And he grabs the first gun that he can get his hands on, whatever's close by, if it's in his truck or whatever. And he just runs out there and pow! <laughs> yeah, and I can't tell you how many times I was deer hunting with Dad, and you know he was using this gun, and I was using the next gun down the line. But you know, you know, nice classy, <laughs> classy gun, really overall. But it it is kind of in that category of redneck gun. Got him a nice sling on there. Oh yeah, nice military, sling, military, military style sling. sling. You know, to be fair, you know these guns can be had for pretty reasonable money. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to pick up something like a 742 or any of the auto loading Remingtons, just make sure the chamber is not all gone to heck and back. Yeah. And uh, you know, it probably if you own one of these, it runs decent. 
probably would behoove you to uh, grab like maybe an Otis cleaning kit or something. Mm -hmm. You can at least just pull a, a pull through boar snake through it every now mm -hmm. and then to swab it out. Just try to keep it clean, you know, because they, they tend to kind of gum up in the chamber area pretty bad, like Chad said. Yeah, for sure. Um, so another <clears> gun <throat> that you're going to see a lot at deer camp if, if you're uh, with the redneck crowd, and, and believe me, we're rednecks. I get it. I mean, we own these guns, so it's not like, you know, we have much air, much to say there. Uh, but you're always going to see some random sporterized military rifle, and it seems like a lot of infields are sporterized. A lot of infields are sporterized. Yeah. Um, this is a uh, <clears throat> just a little, like, BSA, you know, infield. Uh, it was a number one Mark III, and uh, it was cut down. You know, the, the forend of the stock was cut down. You know, the top... Uh, the top cover and everything like that was cut back and everything uh, to lighten the end up and give it a kind of a free-floating type barrel and uh, I can't tell you that this this gun has killed so many freaking deer it's not even funny and uh, you know this belonged to my grandfather when he was still alive and uh, kind of got passed down to me and my dad but the sights <laughs> the rear side is painted orange like hunter orange and then the front side's got some white paint on there for you gotta high be able visibility. to see your sights man so you know being able to see them for sure but uh this is the first gun that i ever carried hunting when i was like you know like 11 12 years old or whatever and i remember being in a tower stand and my dad was like shoot that deer shoot that deer and i was trying to lead it it was running and the muzzle like ran into one of the posts and he was like what are you doing <laughs> he's like freaking out <laughs> but this gun killed one of the biggest deer that's hanging on my dad's wall it was this huge eight pointer he was like 180 pounds field dressed or so just big old freaking deer that my grandpa killed with this rifle just eating in the cornfield he just walked out there, and he's like right in the middle of the city limits too. Big cornfield. He's walked out there, dang deer, pow, and just left him out there. Went and back like, in the house. <laughs> My dad came off the mail route, and he was like, "You shot a deer?" He's like, "Yeah, he's still out there." He's like, "Dang it, Grandpa!" or "Dang it, Daddy!" <laughs> so he, he, yeah, you know, the, the meat was ruined. So. My dad just took him and had him mounted because he was huge, huge deer. But oh, you always see sporterized military service rifles, and they're not bad guns. They're an excellent, excellent investment in a decent sporter rifle that can take a number of different types of game. You know, I mean, they're just real commonplace. Another military style mm -hmm. sling on here. This is something that my grandpa really liked with the like old school military slings. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it, to be fair, you know, uh, and I always have to like provide that caveat there, but a to lot of these fair. sporterized infields make good little hunting rifles. Mm -hmm. Don't pass up a sporterized uh, military <clears throat> surplus rifle mm -hmm. just because, I mean, yeah, like the, the kind of dyed in the wool hardcore collectors out there might go, oh, well, I don't want it because, you know, sporterized or whatever. But we, if we you just want a, a decent little deer gun mm -hmm. and you don't care about using an optic and you want to get into deer hunting for, you know, a reasonable amount of money, mm -hmm. a lot of times you can show up to a gun show and find a gun like this for probably less than a few hundred bucks if mm -hmm. you talk to them right. So this represents a good value mm -hmm. that makes uh, deer hunting very approachable and affordable uh, for a variety of different people. And that's awesome. So there's nothing wrong with the sporter. Well, and a lot of people, too, <clears> will <throat> think, okay, well, I need an optic on it. No, you don't. Most of the deer that you're going to harvest in Georgia are going to be taken at 50 yards, maybe 75 tops. I mean, the longest shot I've ever made on a deer where we hunt is like 80 yards, yep. you know, and you can easily shoot a deer at 80 yards with iron sights real easy. Yeah, and ain't, ain't no problem. No, not at all. Well, spe speaking of uh, the iron sight king, oh yeah, this is a uh, beautiful Marlin 336. This is a nice uh, older model in 32 Winchester Special. Uh, this is a wonderful caliber. This particular gun was produced uh, around 1946 or 47, mm -hmm. something like that. I'm trying to think when they actually started making the 336. Was it in the early 40s or was it in the mid 40s? Mm -hmm. This early is a very, very early 336, guys. But you're not going to show up to deer camp and not find a couple of uh, good old boys sitting around with some lever action 336s. 3030s. And uh, especially 3030 30 caliber, mm -hmm. uh, many of those guns have killed more deer than probably any other gun that there is. I mean, mm -hmm. the Marlin 336 has harvested a ton of deer. Same thing with Winchester 94, guys. I mean, basically this represents lever actions. And lever actions are very, very popular hunting guns. And, yep. uh, you know, they, they just work. I mean, the first several deer that I ever killed were with lever actions. And I still have a little uh, 336 in 3030 with an optic on it that I use to this day that I hand load for that shoots phenomenally well with a micro groove barrel. This so. is definitely one of those guns that uh, is on my list to never get rid of. Oh, uh, yeah. That's a classy gun. What, for sure. what a classy gun. And uh, this <clears> is <throat> definitely back when the Marlins were, uh, were definitely king of the hill. You know, uh, you, you can't look at deer hunting uh, 
firearms, especially in American culture and especially in Southern culture, Southern and culture not Babylon. find some type of a uh, of lever action, mm -hmm. three, uh, you know, three thirty six, and either thirty thirty. Uh, maybe not so many 32 specials. This is kind of an oddball caliber. 3030 30 and 35 are probably the most prominent calibers. Yeah, in you'll see the 35s. I also have a 336 over here in 444 Marlin. And uh, believe me, I, I harvested some deer with that uh, oh, when yeah. I was younger and everything. So that's definitely a gun that you're going to find laying around. All right, so number five. This is a little Sears and Roebuck Ranger. And it's basically, I believe these guns were made by Savage for mm -hmm. Sears. Um, but this one is Sears marked, and it's this one's been well carried, well used. It is a takedown. Uh, you're going to see pump action 22s, you know, partic uh, particularly lots of the little savages and you know little things like that. You'll see some Winchesters around. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what guy doesn't love to show up to deer hunting camp and in between uh, hunting or whatever, you know, break out a couple of little uh, you know soda bottles or something and take a few shots at them and do mm -hmm. a little plinking. Or uh, or a gun that you know you're gonna you're gonna train your your kids on and things like that. So uh, you know it's definitely not a bad thing uh, for a redneck to have mm -hmm. a pump action 22. But you no. know, we're just saying it it is a redneck gun and there's nothing wrong with that. And uh, being a redneck's not a bad. Well, thing. I keep going back to my grandpa because I mean I grew up on a farm and you know my grandpa was a redneck, my dad was a redneck. I'm a you're redneck, a redneck. So it kind of runs in the family, but. My grandpa, you know, has actually, I have this exact same gun at the house, the Sears and Roebuck, the whole nine yards, except mine actually has the rear sight elevator. I need to fix that. Yeah, I need to get an elevator for but, it. But uh, he's he shot crows out of the garden and rabbits and all mm -hmm. kinds of craziness with this thing. And he would always keep a box of uh, shorts laying around and super, super quiet. And, you know, you're not supposed to shoot a gun in the city limits, but he would always shoot guns in the city limits. Go out there behind the house and pop shots that's and stuff a, That's a redneck thing, too, that's I believe. a real redneck a general thing. disdain but, for the rules real quiet with shorts not like suppressor quiet but quiet enough you're quiet not here at the road do, 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 do. but awesome awesome little gun little pump actions are yeah you know nothing wrong with that all right so we're going to get in, we're going to get into the wild card every five guns video has some sort of a wild card every so five guns video has we, we had six our guns? we had our five guns every five guns video has six guns all right the sixth one this is a marlin goose gun all right <laughs> ridiculous i mean look at that thing <laughs> Look at that barrel. <laughs> let, me see it, let me see it. Let me see it. Got the long oh, barrel. It it's a bolt action. Uh, I mean, it doesn't get more redneck than that. It's almost as tall as we are. Yeah, it's pretty tall. <laughs> it doesn't get more redneck than a bolt. For one, it's a bolt action shotgun. All right. Two, it's got this long, huge barrel that I I don't know. I guess you just you just shoot them point blank. You reach up in the air and just boom. You know. But you know th this gun's been in my family for quite a while. And mm -hmm. it's it's a Marlin Goose gun. And uh, you know, hey. Whatever they they've harvested plenty of uh, of geese. I would I would assume the name and geese, other the, waterfowl. The name goose gun. I'm sure it's it's you know taken down some waterfowl mm -hmm. uh, in its day, but uh, definitely well, uh, <laughs> that, that long barrel lets that three inch magnum get up to speed. Yeah, you know? I don't know, man. Yeah, I think what I'm gonna do with this particular gun, we might like weld on a barrel <laughs> extension and make like this just stupid <laughs> Looney Tunes long barrel that's like thirty feet long for it. I love how your grandpa like cut the rear side off. He was like, get that side out of here. I don't need that crap. I don't need that crap. He just, he filed it off. Didn't even do it good either. It's just real crude and everything. Um, oh, but you gosh. know, to be fair, the, these types of guns are cool. You know, it, it's one of those things that's, it's a little bit different. You know, m most of the, I guess, kind of the guns that we put together in this video, we were trying to kind of put together stuff that would go along with deer season because we are getting into fall. And, uh, and, and with that comes deer hunting season mm -hmm. and lots of other types of seasons that'll be going on when it comes to hunting. Both seasons are already open. Both seasons open now. Crazy. Um, but guys, expect some more videos. Uh, we're we're going to try to put together a couple of more hunting related videos just to try to kind of, you know, ring in the hunting season and everything. Uh, so expect that. Uh, also, I've been looking at maybe uh, testing some trail cameras. I've already been gathering a little bit of data and a little bit <coughs> of... Uh, you know, maybe we'll do like kind of an after action review on uh, some of the trail cameras. And what I'm trying to do is instead of buying like the same model of trail camera, I'm trying to buy like several different models. Mm -hmm. And even if I just buy, I don't know, four or five trail cameras, we can kind of compare like how they work, their features, <clears throat> maybe how well they work. And then we can kind of, uh, you know, check them out in an upcoming video and kind of give you our, our feedback on how well each one works. And then we can kind of see like which one's maybe the best one for the money. I'm and, really curious you know. how that, uh, the, the the wireless transmitting one yeah where you like send the photos to your phone yeah, and stuff like the that Moultrie. that thing's pretty neat yeah we'll see so guys expect that uh, again uh soon mm -hmm. as well 
guys, thanks for watching today's video. We appreciate it. And, uh, you know, we, we hope we didn't offend, actually should have offended anybody. <clears throat> from two rednecks to another. From, from, from rednecks to other rednecks. <laughs> we bid you good day. Good day, indeed. <laughs>